Henry, you talked about the trispherical nature of this exhibition, the combination of the, the physical, the emotional, and that conflation between the conceptual and, and the figurative. With works such as this one, that is so immersive and emotional, would you ascribe that, as you were making it, were you ascribing a particular emotion to that, or is that what came out when you look at it now? Well, it's both, because it's, sort of, because it's lasted the distance. There was, there was a specific instance that I wanted to depict, and there was a specific instance of when it was made, and the two have become sort of confused, a bit like the way jade forms in the mantle, which is when rock gets basically felted. Mm. So, so holds together and becomes very strong. And there is a sort of, and there is in my mind a certain strength with these ones, particul particularly that one, because that is the quietest and the emptiest, and it's the one with the most ghosts. There's a whole crowd of them. But there's also with this one and this one as well. There's a sense of a wide open landscape. It's it's beautiful and haunting. And slightly oppressive as well, the sense yes. of scale. Yes, indeed. There is, well, yes, there is, a, there is a terror inherent in vast open landscapes. It certainly terrified me, although it had um, other stimulus at the time when that was particularly pressing in my life. But um, yes, but the obverse of terror is love just as the obverse side of the, the obverse side of hate is love there's not very much there's not very much difference between the two really the opposite of love isn't hate it's indifference yes and yes. there's and, and there's no indifference here no no absolutely not no. so do you see some in these works a progression of that terror to that love or a meeting of that terror confrontation of that terror well it's more a conflation because when the two come together, well, well, when you sort of think the two at the same time, the, whatever it is becomes imbued with extra meaning, which is why if you dream about something, and, and you dream about things that, things that you love, and also things that are well, sort of dark and, 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 and threatening, whatever it is you dream about, it becomes sort of imbued with extra significance, mm. if that makes any sense. It does, it does. And in some of them you have the the specificity of the plant, so that's metagari and it's gnarly and spiky. Yes, yes. yes. Be a bit, but that's entirely in, incidental. The show is not right. about plants at yes. all. Yes, the, yes. This is, they are, they are conceptual paintings pretending to be figurative. They're wearing, <laughs> they're wearing the mask. Because I see no reason at all why the conceptual and why the figurative cannot coexist. And they and they feed off each other, but they, they often, one sort of hemi parasitizes. Yes, but they don't often, do they? I mean, a lot of artists would choose to be figurative or would choose. Yes, yes. But the, 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 well, that's their prerogative. I would not. I would be disinclined. At, at the moment, anyway, I'm disinclined to draw the absolute distinction. I don't see why. Well, I have drawn the one to the other. Right. Yes. Yes. But they are both, and there's elements of both. I mean, I'm sort of obsessed with figurative work down time. There are some Japan. there are some... No, in fact, there are Korean lacquers from ancient tombs with which I'm rather obsessed, and there's some more in China as well, and I've only seen about two grainy images on the internet, but anyway, yeah. But, but it's just such little things as that that you can eat and latch onto, and which then become imbued in the working process, because that's is the the idea of lacquer is also largely where the idea of black comes from. Yes, of course, and the black and the cosmos as well. I mean, this is where you get the idea of concentric circles. So you've got yes, a, a tree, a place, Absolutely. and you're moving out into the cosmos. A sphere contains something. A sphere can contain a world, and humans. Are Always thought of things as a sphere, whether we now think of the, we now think of the planet. Well, mm. We've obtained a degree of knowledge through technology and the new technological renaissance that we do, in fact, live on a sphere, mm. not a perfect sphere, but that also other things can be spheres as well. But mm. in figurative and conceptual terms, in terms of conceptualizing the world, humans have always turned to spheres and what's in them, and so it's what's in the sphere that's interesting. 
there's a containment there, and there's a in this work there's a there's a softness, which is in some of the works but not all of the works. Yes, yes, the, a creamy, a creamy light, indeed. Yes, and this in in each painting there is a highly specific emotion. That one is. That one will. There is, well, well, because each work depicts a specific moment mm. in my recollection, I mean, I'm not in search of lost time or anything, it's just a way of um, reworking things. Mm. There, is, there, is an, there is a specific emotion which dominates things and which comes to the force. So that one is hope mm. and happiness. Mm. Because I, I, I'd, found, I'd found something. Great, 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 great importance when I found that particular place, and that's how I first saw it. I knew that I had found it, I'd arrived, and that what I was looking for was there. And then, if we can go over here, that's quite a contrast to this one here, which is more um, sharp, perhaps. And yes, well, that one is partially a reflection of insomnia, and. Insomnia is quite can be quite traumatic and definitely quite quite stressful. But, oft, but there there is a, there is a strange thing sometimes when you remember things which are so quite almost quite quite painful or quite stressful that you can f you can find yourself sort of wrapping them in amber mm. and they obtain this sort of sepia tone of nostalgia. Mm. So it's 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 quite weird. And then, and then if you, and then that sensation comes while waking. But if you then dream about that too, oh, yes. it's formidable. <laughs> yes, there's, there's, I think of the Leonard Cohen line: "There is a crack in everything in some of these works," and there is a sense of the world we know, and then a sense of the world that we don't know what's above or what's underneath. Yes, but I don't actually depict it. I just, I'm just interested in the idea. But sometimes it comes across a little the idea of. Hell. The idea of hell is fascinating, and the idea of heaven is fascinating, and different conceptions mm. of the two, or some other world where the dead go. Right. Yes. And and sometimes the death are ghosts, and sometimes the dead are ghosts, which was which was Philip Pull Pullman's envisioning of them, and he and he created a world where the authority had played a trick. You thought you were going to heaven when you'd served the authority with your life, but then you went to this nothing world instead. And so that idea of a place full of ghosts is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And these these landscapes are full of ghosts. And they are and except these ghosts are having a good time in this oh. place as in this land of conceptual milk and conceptual honey, or as in of reality, of course, is basically neither. <laughs> but the, the the ghosts in here and here, for, for for example, they are, I can see them. They 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 are dressed exquisitely, and they're all having picnics and reading books and other nice things. So those so when I visit the, these places, I occasionally go to visit them too. So it's a spaciousness, spaciousness really, isn't it? These have a sense of yes. human space where perhaps ghosts and can exist where they might not in a more busy Well, I've never, environment. in all the times I've been to these places, I've never met anyone else. Mm -hmm. There is there is a solitude, but that's not because of me, it's because, it's because these places are unsettling mm -hmm. and because people don't necessarily seek them out. So the idea of avoiding a desert is interesting too. So that's Unsettling and unsettled, you're bringing the two together, perhaps. Yes, yes, indeed, the, the two can exist. And, and of course, all the best top secret installations are in deserts. Ah, yes, of course. So I, I'm sure there is something of the romance in the desert and such sort of urban mythology as well. Yes, yes. There's the, the, that bigness, though, is also the bigness of the sky. And here you use lots of colour and it's, it's closer. Well, it's not necessarily closer. I mean, I mean, it's it's like what Green Greenberg said about flatness. When you do a sky, the sky is still flat. So, it doesn't in that context, right. it doesn't matter too much if the sky is one color or if it's many colors. I mean, one of my favorite images is once again from Philip Pullman, the idea mm. of the clouded mountain. Mm. This 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 gigantic 
flying structure of breathing mother of pearl in which the authority lives but which is covered in clouds so that idea and, and of course there's the idea of the coat of many colors as well mm. which is the idea of allure and a value mm. and of popping color and the rarity of color as well which is interesting so when doing so i mean the, the great thing about these three skies was that they were inherently great fun to do. Yes, yes. They, 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 were, they were gigantic fun to do. And that was, these were done in the last summer, it was at its very hottest. So it was as though sort of cells were exploding in the heat. Yes, yes. And, and, I, and, and I had a strange dream about a, a d -d 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 disco sky and of having absolutely no idea how on earth I would depict it. So, right. so there was a great sense of discovery in doing that too. So these three are great fun doing these, although that one was very difficult. Mm. Why was that difficult? That one didn't like resolving itself. You see, these, mm. these paintings, they, 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 they took so long, they all have their individual beings and they've all got a direct line to their almighty, which is me. Yes. And so they tell me exactly what they want, and so, so they might say, right, you, I need this, this, and this. That's a really nice idea of, of the Almighty, which sort of comes through here. I mean, this is almost theatrical. Well, yes, it's the idea of creation. Yes. I mean, the idea of being creation is, in many ways, one and the same with power. And that was one of, um, in, there's a short story of, of Borges, Tlernukba uh, or Bestertios, and towards the very end of that, he, he depicts this, misanthropic American billionaire who funded, well, devoted all his resources to the creation of a world. He, he and I quote Borges's translation here, believed in the continuing of slavery. So he was clearly a morally mm. icky person. Mm. Well, somewhat disgusting in lots of ways, and he got poisoned actually. But he did not believe in Jesus, and so he sponsored the idea. He sponsored the creation of the world of Tlun and Ukba and Orbis Tertius, and through the Society of Orbis Tertius, as a way of demonstrating that humans could create a world too. Oh. That we can, that we can better, that we can be like God. We can make like God, and so the idea of creation as being an, an inherently powerful thing. Well, it's, 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 it's quite intoxicating, isn't it? Well, it's intoxicating, but it's also terrifying and chilling and... Well, only if it goes wrong. That's right, yes, that's true. <laughs> the, these two works here show your use of painting the frame. And was that always part of the plan? Or was yes, okay. yes. The, the, well, the idea of, paint, of a painting as a painting has always, to me, been a slightly suspicious concept, just as I'm somewhat suspicious of the idea of an artist. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, the idea of the artist is altogether too large and woolly for li liking, but the thing is, this surface, gouache on gesso panel, is very delicate, so it has to be behind glass, so this painted creature has to live within its own hemisphere. And so it must have a frame. And, and so the idea of, I mean, I don't really like the idea of the frame either. I don't like the word frame. So I just think of it as the thing or something. Uh -huh. yes. I love the idea of something being just the thing. Yes. The, the surround, the structure in which the thing lives is one. This, the container, you might say, is one with its contents. Right. I mean, I've been thinking of them lately in, almost in terms of the pithos that Pandora opened. I mean, in Hesse, I'm not, actually sh can't, not absolutely sh certain of this at the moment, but as far as I recall, in Hesiod, you know, you know the way hope was left mm -hmm. in the pithos? Mm -hmm. It was written originally as hope being sealed inside a pocket mm -hmm. under the rim mm -hmm. of the jar. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it couldn't come out. Wow. Hope was imprisoned. And these sort of and the paintings have a sort of sometimes slightly prickly relationship with the idea of being contained, but they need to be contained because if they're exposed, well, they'll sort of suffer really. So yes. the the, con the container and the contents are one. The painting and the frame are one. And in terms of an object, they're indistinguishable. They are one object. And the idea of the painting becoming of a painting, because we... Th is we've got a very specific idea of a painting becoming mm. one, becoming an object is something which I find really fascinating, and that's something, and that's where I want to go next to explore this further. 
of the almost the artifact. So here you can almost well, think yes, the artifact is yeah. interesting. The artifact itself is a very specific concept too, of course. Mm. I mean, this feels like the frame is almost containing the image, and if the oh, frame it does. wasn't there, the image yes. would just explode out. Yeah. Well, yes. The, um, yeah. No. I'm not quite sure, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the sort of grey areas of ambiguity, I think. Yes. But things are moving. This is the green is falling, seeping down. The the cloud forms here are sort of erupting up. There's a sense of change, dramatic change. Well, well, that well that sort of Mullenbeekia River would would definitely take a couple of years to form. Right. Is it one of, one of the great pleasures in life is, is watching a carpet of Mullenbeekia expand over the years. Uh, but, and and the clouds and the clouds too. If that were animated, which might be fun, I don't know. They would sort of they would be sort of like molten wax. Mm. They would just change very slowly. They would sort of mould mm. one another like gentle hands. Because those those clouds are fundamentally soft and gentle, although the idea of them came from smoke. So it's a beautiful softness coming out of destruction. Mm -hmm. And the idea of d d d d d destruction, I mean, I, I, I've, always been, I've always been interested in something Mao said about create nothing, destroy nothing. Mm -hmm. He meant that you couldn't create without destroying. He was referring to the cultural revolution, so he was trying to justify it. But that idea of a finiteness of space for mm. creation and that you can't mm. create without destroying is definitely, I would say, relevant mm. in the modern time. There's something about the solitary tree which is different from what we expect from a forest. A forest doesn't have a shadow, but single trees do. And I think that's quite yes. a thing. Shadows that are quite prominent. In yes, indeed. Place. Shadows... Shadows are definitely important. I mean, I rest in those, I mean, I lay and occasionally slept in those very shadows of those very trees in order to read books, having, having walked, you know, sort of 20 kilometres to get there and back. So the idea of the shadow is quite, is quite potent, of hotness and coolness, of heaviness and lightness. So the shadow is heavy as well, mm. as well as being dark, it's heavy. Mm. This, this last book here, there's a poweringness, I don't know if that's the right word, in some of these works, which makes me think about some of your earlier works too, in your last exhibitions, but there is that sense of height and what's above and what's below again. This smacks of natural formations. And well, that's a totally artificial formation. That, that formation does not exist ex right. except within my mind. The, the idea was more, the idea is not height, that's not, not a cliff, that is stacked flatness, if you could sort of slice up the landscape and put it on top of... If you slice up that landscape there, if you slice up a flat landscape and you stack it up, you still get a flat landscape. Right, yes, you can't right. create the mm. 3D out of the 2, 2D. Mm. And also just an exploration of the, the creamy, milky glow of light out there, which is one of the great things and you sort of see strange things in that. In, you, you see strange things in certain lights. So it's very important to get the, to get the light exactly right. And, and the stars within this particular work are a reflection of Georg B B Buchner's fairy tale, the one in Voisek told by the grandmother, mm. which involved which involved what was recounted in his briefest essentials, a, a child, I, I think after the Thirty Years' War, when everything had been destroyed, I mean, as like I was saying earlier with the idea of destruction in the world, and there was no one left, but, this, but the moon smiled down so kindly. Mm. So he went up to see the moon, but the moon turned out to be made of rotten wood. And he turned to see the sun, but the sun had become a wilted sunflower. And even the stars were dead. They were just golden flies stuck on thorns by some bird. And, and he looked back and saw that the earth had, had vanished. 
Oh. So I was all alone in the blackness. Oh, that's terrible. Forever. Well, is it, is it terrible or is it the beauty well, there as well? Well, it's a, I think that there's a beauty. I mean, the idea of, a, of an endless black sphere with golden stars is quite mm. lovely, of course. And I've, I've explored the idea of rotten wood and wilted things and the idea of death. This is quite a lot of death because I'm not quite sure what these ghosts were like before they became ghosts, but there must have been some death somewhere along the way. But there's a warning, a sort of Icarus-like warning to that's behind a lot of those sorts of tales. I know, but that's the thing. B B Buchner was a bit mad, right. so so there is a great ambiguity, and I'm main I'm mainly interested in it for its imagery. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It all comes back to imagery in this yes. show. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.